It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals. All that and more coming up next. It's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paycor Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started, and we are underway from Cincinnati. This fielded right at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here are the Bengals on offense, and here is Joe Burrow ready to lead them at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, and what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. On two, ready? Right to the air is Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. That's a good start to the ball game. Maybe a little bit of a tone setter offensively. They come out throwing right away, and it's an early completion and a quick first down. Now Burrow on first down. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. He's locked in early. Two nice first down completions to start. I like the fact that he's seeing the whole field early, spreading it around a little bit in the early going. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow firing quickly here, and that's complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And now it's third and four. Burrow looking to pass. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Nice play on the football, and while it was tipped in the air and made everyone a little bit anxious before falling to the ground, you just know defensive players are taught to knock the ball to the ground. But early in games, emotions come into play, nerves come into play, and despite the training, the ball was tipped up. Fortunately for them, they didn't pay for that error. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. 
The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. This guy's leadership is so important to how this offense functions. He doesn't shrink from any moments on game day, and everything he does, he does with confidence. He sets the example in practice, off the field, and is the guy leading everyone out for each possession. Tua and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 18. Motion man is Berrios. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. Mike Hilton, he came up nicely there and dropped him behind the line of scrimmage. It's probably a pretty good sign here on the opening drive if your guys from the secondary are coming up and spilling things in the backfield. How about the adrenaline and aggressiveness that led his eyes to the backfield to run up there and make that tackle, setting a tone early for his defense. Now a throw here to his running back. There he goes, right side. It's a big play there for Miami. 62 yards. I guess we got a good idea about what the game plan is for attacking the secondary. No beating around the bush with this crew. His first throw of the game is a deep shot, and it connects. That's a tendency breaker right there because normally you build up to the big shot, but not in this case. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Gets this one to Hill. And down inside the 15 he goes. 11 more yards that go around. A first down as well. with Mostert up the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And he pushes forward from maybe three down to the six-yard line. This now a third and four. Now Tua. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs and a dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. This an easy one, 23-yarder. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to 3. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal, and yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And they went empty backfield, and because of that, nobody was there to pick up the blitz. And you know that offenses, when they go with the empty backfield, they have different things designed on every play to try to account for things. But what people often forget, defense is audible as well. And a lot of times when they see an empty backfield, they audible right into a blitzing situation. Now here's a throw that's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Here's third and six. Here's Burrow. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and drag it to make sure he gets it done. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Here's the first carry of the game for Zach Moss. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second and seven. Burrow will throw. Got a man open. It's Chase. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Third and two. On play action. The throw out wide going to be incomplete. Yeah, it's still early in the football game, and you hate to give away possessions. But instead of forcing something downfield on third down, that was a wise move to just get it to the sideline. Now here's Brad Robbins now. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. So Miami coming out for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Two are going to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. Here's second and ten now from the 35. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. A handoff running left is Moster, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. This defense tough to run against, and those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get him for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 28. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. 
They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worth this all yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? Still 15 yards to go, second down. Back to the running game with Mostert. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Throwing now is Tungamailoa toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion force him into going for three and not giving up six. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Janu Smith from six yards away as his guys are able to extend their lead. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead grows to 10 0. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Jonu Smith, the big tight end, who capped the drive with a touchdown reception. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. The Bengals getting set to go. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Moss. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Second 
Second and six, just inside the 30. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. His throw incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Play action. It's Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Call that a very strong gain of 24. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 47. Now it's Burrow. And he had to reach for that one, but can't grab it. It's behind him, and it's incomplete. T. Higgins was the intended target, but it's going to be second down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. To the air again, Burrow. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. Now a pass that's taken in by Hill. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Ten nothing the score after one on EA Sports. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter. From the 32 now, here's first and ten. As they've got it as we resume action. Now a play fake. Here's Tongue of Iloa. Now he's flushed out left. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. Third and four. From the gun, it's Tua. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. And that's one of those where it feels like backyard football in a sense. You say, forget about the route. Just run to the open spot in the middle of the field, and I'll find you. Good throw, good concentration on the catch, and they pick up the first down. 
Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Motion man is Berrios. On second down, Mostert. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. We often poke a little fun at running backs past the age of 30. Oh, they're getting old. They can't run anymore. Well, he's showing past the age of 30, you can still have some nice runs like that. You certainly can. And I think that we're starting to expand our definition of old running back. Because it used to be as soon as they hit 30, we want to get rid of these guys and go to the younger guys. But now that the guys are taking such great care of themselves, as you pointed out, you can still get explosive runs at any age. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Across the line and to the ball quickly there, Trey Hendrickson. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On second down, a run by Achan. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop it behind the line. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside, and finished off the runner for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Everything's going right here in this first half, and they've got a good lead. And part of that can be attributed to their success on third downs. This is another conversion here, and they can look to really open things up now with this first and goal. Here's Mostert. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Definitely an important sequence here for this defense. They've had their share of struggles in this first half. They just cannot afford to give up another touchdown here. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Again, it's Mostert. And this time he's going to lose yardage as they push him back to the four-yard line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort him to join them in the effort. Two and now, third and goal. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins are able to stretch out their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Sanders on for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll be second in a couple. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. They'll try and run for this with Moss. This defense not budging back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was. Because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stumped that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. The Bengals bring out their punter now. As he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Here comes Berrios, 46 yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Up the middle, a chance. He takes this for three to the 29. The offense on third down, they've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Looking to pass to a and he is caught, and he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Starting to rack up the yardage here in this first half. Five catches now and a first down. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick it down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. 41 yards rushing for him now to this point. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's a second down and four. Now Tua. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, oh, they'll certainly be on the tablets going over that one for sure. Clearly, they were expecting something else out of the defense and couldn't adjust to make that completion happen. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Tua. He is going to find Hill here. He's going to have the first down and more than that. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Dolphins are able to widen their lead here in this first half. 
What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. But let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. He's blowing up coverages. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And a route is on here in this first half. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Well, CD, you kind of feel like they're in a bit of a danger zone right here because now you're down three scores, and I know we're in the first half, but the way this offense hasn't been able to generate anything, you feel like they probably need to get something going on this drive, right? Yeah, and sometimes I overuse that this is an important possession, but I think this has to be the possession where they come up with an answer because only a few teams in league history have ever come back from a four-score deficit. And if they don't score here... That's what they could be facing the next time they get the ball. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Burrow. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. completion here as they fail to connect on third. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. The Bengals bring out their punter now, standing just outside his own goal line. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Speedster Raheem Mostert and the rest of this offense out to start the drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, You've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. On first down, Tongue of Iloa. Open man is Hill. He's got it. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Two are going to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Jermaine Pratt fighting in and dropping him for the loss. Traditionally, as a defense, your number one job, stop the run. But in today's football, it's impacting the opposing quarterback. Make him uncomfortable. And so far, they've not been able to do that. Not at all. He's been really comfortable in the pocket. Three touchdown passes already. So that could be an important first sack if they do want to turn things around. Now third down and seven. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. It'll lead to a fourth down. 
That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. A 45-yard punt, four there on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. They defer to Brown to start the drive. Oh, able to avoid him. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. Now Burrow to throw on second down. He'll look to Gesicki on the out route. Ball is caught. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll wind up getting about six out of that as that's going to lead us to the two-minute warning. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here now, second and four. Burrow looking to pass. On the right side open is Gusecki. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 27-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. That's complete once again. It's Gesicki. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. Again, it's Burrow. Man open left side is Brown. Brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Burrow will throw. This will be caught once again by Brown. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Not only did we just see back-to-back -back nice gains, but we're also seeing the confidence rise, not just for the guy who caught it, but the guy throwing it as well. And these can these back-to-back -back catches here out of the backfield, that can set something up downfield in a later sequence, right? A lot of the time, it starts to draw the defense closer to the line of scrim. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Burrow as the first half is winding down. And the Bengals are able to cut into this lead in the final seconds of the first half. And that's a critical touchdown. I don't want to be too hyperbolic or whatever, but they needed some points on the board before halftime. They certainly did, and, you know, it's not going to race everything that happened in the first half. Look, they got outplayed. There's no question about that. But now it gives them a chance to regroup, feel a little bit better about themselves. And how many games have we done where we've seen everything flip when another half begins. And by the way, did you say hyperbolic? I did, I did. Well, thank you.
Let's go, y'all! So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Taking it about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Third quarter starts with a run from Mostert. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second down, here's Mostert again. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three yard gain brings up a third down. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now they'll throw with Tungabailoa. They'll swing this out wide. Here's Achan. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Two is throws taken in by Waddle. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. Right. 
Tua sets up to pass it. That one complete to Hill. And Hill is going to have a Dolphins first down as he'll get this down to the 40. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection. It doesn't matter how many guys. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped at the one. So they will wave off the flag and let the completion stand. Really great job by the receiver fighting through all the contact and still coming down with the football. All that great work and practice being put into the game. Mostert is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just the third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. Touchdown, Dolphins. Janu Smith. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Dolphins take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play any play they're rocking and rolling right now Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this taken in at the goal line. Muscles by at the 25. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down. Here's Burrow. Throw right side into the hands of the tight end sample. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch at its second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. 
who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 33. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 12 more yards there and another first down. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Trenton Irwin. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. So a very important first drive of the third quarter, Charles, and safe to say, a much-needed touchdown. Which leads to the question, where was this in the first half? Because if they'd had a few more drives like that, they wouldn't be in this situation. But that is the kind of drive that sends a message to the other side. We're going to be here, and we're going to battle you to the end. And they're going to get the two-point conversion caught in the end zone, and that cuts the lead a bit further. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. He continues to just torch this defense. Perfect on the last drive, including his fourth touchdown pass of the game. Similar to hitters that are in that great zone in baseball, and they say the ball looks bigger when it's approaching the plate and they're smacking it around. I think for him, the windows to throw into are wide open. Doesn't matter whether they're tight or not. He feels like it's wide open, puts it in there. Four touchdown passes, he thinks he's gonna throw a whole lot more before this one's over. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's down into the red zone at the 15 after a gain of 15. First and 10. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Now they show run with three tight ends here on first down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. 
75 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Looking to pass to him. Touchdown! Jonu Smith, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins had six to their lead. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. Sanders now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was Jonu Smith, the big tight end, who capped the drive with a touchdown reception. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Quick slant caught by Chase. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Play action. It's Burrow. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And he's brought down. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. Throwing now, Burrow on first down, and that's incomplete. I can assure you, setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. So second and 10, third quarter. Thanks for tagging along with us here from the Queen City of Cincinnati. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 27-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Up, 
to the air again, Burrow. And this will be caught by Brown. So the completion gets him just a yard, and it'll be second down. They'll give this to Moss running right. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. 26 yards for Zach Moss. And the Bengals get a bit closer. So there you go. They needed a big play, and they got one there on the touchdown run. And that was a very important drive. Of course, they all are when you're trailing in the second half. But what I really liked, they didn't panic. They knew they still had time to run the football and keep playing their game. Zach Taylor's made the decision. They'll go for two here. And Burrow's going to look to throw for it. This is caught. Was he in? Yes. Two points. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Miami set to take over. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time. But any team will take that type of run each and every time. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and six. Off of play action. Tongue of Iloa. Now, a quick throw there is incomplete. And he was looking for Jalen Waddle there. And it's third down. Here's Tua. They set up the screen. H A has it. Now he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Here's Jones on the return. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. 
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. A give running right Moss. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And we've got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go play action with Burrow. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now it's Burrow. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Moss on the give up the middle. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. Now Burrow. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Drew Sample, the intended receiver, and it's third and five. Burrow looking to pass. Got a man. It's Brown. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. You want to put together a long drive? You've got to be able to convert on third down, and they've done exactly that on this one. Sure enough, came up with another conversion right there. Again, it's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Now second and five. This is our game to win, offense. Here's Burrow. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. 
Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Burrow will throw. This pass complete to Higgins. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And the Bengals on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. Here it's third and three. On the handoff, it's Moss. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And that's exactly what you're looking for at the inside linebacker spot. Versatility. He can drop into coverage, or as he did on that last play, use his speed to get to the perimeter and knock the ball carrier for a loss. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. McPherson's kick is good. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. Well, no field goal attempts for him until the final quarter, but no hesitation on his end. He comes right out and nails his first field goal try. I give him a lot of credit, too, because he stood there the entire ball game, but has managed to stay with it both mentally and physically. When they called on him, he was ready, and he knocked it through the post. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. They'll let this go deep for Waddle. And that's caught inside the 30. It's a big play there for Miami. 48 yards. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Two are going to throw. Touchdown, Dolphins! Janu Smith from 19 yards away. And the Dolphins have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, it seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns him there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that will make this a 19-point game.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. On first down, they'll start out with Moss. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Man open left side is Brown. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up third and two. Now it's Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they get five there on third and two. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him, and he makes another nice play. Back-to-back -back catches. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Wide open receiver complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. That one goes for 24 yards. So the ball moves from 138 to the other as they come up on first and 10. Throwing again, it's Burrow. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Second and 10 now, Burrow able to find Higgins. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll run here with Moss. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. Here's second and goal operating from the eight-yard line. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. This is caught. Touchdown, Bengals! Chase Brown from eight yards out. And the Bengals have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And they're able to cut this deficit down to 12.
Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Dolphins are going to recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. That one behind his receiver and incomplete. He was trying to get it to Tyreek Hill that time, but it'll be second down. Tua sets up to pass it. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Up the middle they go with Mostert. They find a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals' 25. It'll be a five-yard pick up there, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So they get the three. It was fourth and one, and I think you were doing what I was doing. I was looking down at the sideline. I'm not sure the offensive unit wanted the three. They wanted to go for it. But when have we ever seen a unit that didn't want to go for it in that situation, That's true. right? Sometimes it's just way more important to have the points on the board than to worry about any type of a gamble. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. So Burrow and the Bengals down by 15. A minute 54 on the clock. They need two touchdowns and at least one two-point conversion mixed in there as well. Let's go, let's go. 
throwing. Burrow. Now they go screen. It's complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Burrow. That's complete to Chase. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Here's second and a yard. Now Burrow. And that's into the hands of Gesicki. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Well, they need to score and score quick. One timeout remaining. Final minute, first and ten. Burrow. Open man, that's Gasicki down the field. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. They'll come up first and ten here. To throw Burrow. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's Burrow. Throw left side here, complete to the tight end, Gusecki. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just here. As this gets him back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Five plays there on that drive. And it all concluded with a touchdown pass to the tight end, Mike Gesicki. So with an even 30 seconds to go, everything will come down to this onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. The risk-reward of the onside kick, when you don't get it, the risk comes out to play, and here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything, because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them and field position leads you to that type of play calling and whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep those types of things now that they've given up that type of field position the advantage is switched to their opponent Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game.
Down to an ego's Tua, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense? They certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.